Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day to start things off. The Ethereum Foundation has announced a $5 million grant to United Kingdom based company known as Parity Technologies. According to a post on the official Ethereum blog that happened a couple days ago. According to the post, the grant is for scalability, usability and security work. Namely, this money will fund Parity's work on Casper, sharding, light clients, developer tools, QA, audits, and infrastructure improvements. Furthermore, the post explains that funding will be delivered in several tranches. The Witcher first supports development that Parity has already completed. The other parts of funding will be each handed upon over upon the completion of assembly standard EWASM or EWASM compatibility work, a light wallet for the mainnet in successful complete completion of phase zero and phase one of sharding uh not much to really talk about here it's just the fact that um i've noticed an uptick and i'm pretty sure you have as well over the last couple of weeks um ethereum really has to get itself together they've positioned themselves in a very nice place when you listen to the news that's actually floating around about ethereum now um it appears the bullish sentiments that we had in 2017 and maybe even the beginning of 2018 are starting to return for ethereum so they have to kind of keep that momentum up this is coming from um, Constantinople. We also had news that one of their uh, testnet hard forks for another uh, upgrade um, was successful. I think that happened yesterday. It's not really much to talk about a, a, a testnet hard fork. Uh, that was also successful. And you realize um, Vitalik Buterin a couple days ago, a week ago, he gave, um, I think, $300,000, $100,000 each to three different uh, companies who are working on building things for Ethereum. So they're trying to push as much money out there as possible. I feel like my opinion for a large part of ethereum's history i think it was very focused on the like the main developers inside of the ethereum project and they kind of all worked on everything and now it feels like they're giving extra money to other corporations and companies and institutions who have um ethereum's best interest at heart uh and i think this is probably the smartest way to go because the quicker that they can uh get casper out sharding out like clients like everything that'll actually make ethereum like a usable everyday tool uh, the quicker Ethereum then gets adopted and the quicker that the price ends up going up. So uh, they're on their way. They just have to like not really trip. Like 2018 was a very bad year for Ethereum and not even just like price-wise as far as like infrastructure, things they were promising since 2015 and we're in 2019 now that still haven't really been implemented. Uh, if they can keep up the momentum, I know we just started the year, uh, Ethereum can have a very, very, very nice, even like first two quarters. If they have a first good two quarters, then the rest of the year should be smooth sailing as long as they have some type of implementations that actually end up coming out. Uh, everyone's still holding their breath because if Constantinople goes off without a hitch, Ethereum uh, might be doing very well this year then. Next up, we have some IOTA news. They're actually in the news today. Uh, it says there's a new partnership uh, between IOTA and Crypto Storage AG. Uh, which they offer institutional grade based IOTA token storage solutions across the globe for ensuring greater services, security services for users and partners, partners, partners of IOTA through separate infrastructures to definable approval processes. Also, the newly developed crypto storage solution seeks to cater to the demand of financial intermediaries. We typically don't hear a lot about IOTA. Uh, nonetheless, that they have partnered with some type of like a, a crypto storage type thing. So this is very good for them. Um, IOTA is also another company that. Not that they, they didn't really do bad in 2018. They just kind of weren't really in the spotlight. Um, and I think, and I've, so I stumbled across this as well, and I think it's actually quite valid for exactly what we're talking about. Um, IOTA has managed to do something that a lot of other companies in the cryptocurrency space have not. The same way, when prices are going down and you still manage to acquire different partnerships, it, it says something about your uh, workmanship, uh, you know, your, your work ethic kind of thing. Uh, and through the time when... I have felt like a, for a long time when, when cryptocurrency projects are looking for things to kind of latch onto or to boast about that they've partnered with, it, it always comes down to a cryptocurrency exchange. This one is using us as, as a payment option. This one's doing so-and-so. IOTA is one of the very few. They don't have many partnerships. They don't have like an enormous amount of partnerships behind them, but they do have very big partnerships names, partnership names behind them. One is Microsoft, for those who uh, don't know, this happened in 2017. Um, a lot of the implementation of what's been happening with IOTA at the moment seems to just be uh, the use of their uh, Tangle, because they don't have a blockchain, they have something called the Tangle, which they say is limitless in its scalability. Uh, 
it seems to just be the use of their Tangle technology because if you have something that is uh, infinitely scalable, then other people in the tech space are going to be very interested in what you have to offer them. Uh, but according to a lot of people who are in uh, into the IOTA project, not even uh, actually in it, I haven't spoken with anyone who's actually in the project. Um, other people keep telling me that they're actually using the IOTA token or that they will be using the IOTA token in the future. So we have Microsoft. Uh, scrolling down, we have um, Volkswagen, which is also incredibly good. Like I said, other people in the cryptocurrency space have focused heavily on... Um, yeah, pretty much exchanges or like bragging about that someone has, uh, you know, you can now use it here. We're on this cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, we have a new uh, DAP or app or something that's built on top of our platform. Microsoft and Volkswagen are incredibly large companies and corporations. This is like something that can't be understated, especially um, if we actually have, let's say by the end of this year, I'm, I'm giving it that time frame simply because I feel like crypto is going to do very well this year. And I feel like this will be the time frame when other companies and institutions will want to make use of a bull market and say, hey, we're also partnering with them. If we get some kind of news that they are going to be actually using the IOTA token, uh, especially just with even um, Volkswagen and Microsoft, then the sky is going to be the limit as far as the price. Um, we also have DNB, which is also very significant. Where's the other one? We have Bosch. Bosch is a German-based multinational engineering and electrics company, electronics company. Uh, the the fact that IOTA has even has them as an actual uh, partner is incredibly interesting because the main focus of the IOTA token and the IOTA project is be part of the internet of things where all things are interconnected. And if you can target companies that make cars and that make electronics that are in tons of houses around the world, you are then doing very, very well. And the last one is um, Fujitsu, which we had news, I think a couple of, it seems relatively recent when we had this information. Anyway, I saw this floating around and I thought it was interesting that whenever we do get news from IOTA, it typically ends up being like a major partnership. Uh, but I think that the crash of 2018 has had a huge effect on uh, people's optimism towards many different projects. These are not small companies. Um, that's in one. Uh, IOTA is not the only cryptocurrency partnered with Microsoft. There's like five of them. I think Microsoft is trying to figure out or use all of them uh, to see which one ends up going to be the best or whatever, what have you. But yeah, let's move on. Next up, XRP is in the news as well. Um, something called BitVolo, a trustless crypto payment gateway, has added a plugin that enables bloggers to receive payments in cryptocurrencies. The gateway works on the decentralized nature of blockchain and supports IOTA, Stellar, XLM, XRP, and Nano. The plugin also supports SEPA bank transfers, which is kind of insane. The plugin also ensures that bloggers don't have to pay any commission or credit payments, which can be as high as 5% of the total amount. This was reported by Blockchain Reporter. The plugin charges a fee of, I think that's Czech francs or Swiss francs. I can't remember what CHF is, uh, but that the, the cost is almost nothing per transaction and allows convergence of fiat currencies into digital currencies. The fiat currencies that are enabled by the plugin are USD, EUR, and CHF. The bloggers using the plugin do not have to worry about maintenance and technical issues as the plugin operates in its own blockchain nodes. Incredibly important. Uh, I mean, we are seeing movement of... Uh, what's the quickest way of saying this? It's nice that other people are figuring out other ways for people to be able to buy, sell, use, and hold cryptocurrencies. That's kind of the nicest way of saying it. I was remember a couple of months back when we had information that you could use uh, Litecoin on Facebook and then we had uh, Bitcoin on Facebook and now we have you can send cryptocurrencies through WordPress. Kind of insane. Um, this was spoken about about like a year and a half ago, not this particular thing, but the fact that people thought in the future that we would have plugins and all of our browsers and all of our phones and stuff like that, that would allow us to um, interact with cryptocurrencies in some sort of way. Uh, the last thing that I expected was WordPress. I guess that is the way they were moving, especially because uh, remember also two months ago, there was that person who figured out how to send Bitcoin transactions like through radio waves and also someone else, the, a lot of other, the projects that we have right now are trying to um, hone in on people around the world who don't have internet access and have like the old, uh, like the thick Nokia phones and stuff like that, where you can also send crypto between those. What a time to be alive. Someone asked me this yesterday and I decided just to get into it right now as opposed to uh, writing a comment or backtracking. Uh, someone asked me yesterday exactly uh, what the 
all the institutions that we're going to be using x rapid the confirmed ones that we have so far uh for those who aren't looking at the screen i'll read it out there are 13 names that we have on this list it's euro xm bank that we had news about yesterday we had send friend jnfx ftcs uh the bank of kuwait TransPayGo, bfc bahrain someone c commented about the, the, the way that i said that i had a friend from here and he taught me how to say it that way i i, I don't know uh connect pay gmt worldcom finance olympia trust company pontual you send uh and rendimento and these are the five that we had yesterday we had we had five new uh companies that are going to be using x rapid as well and it was these over here so just thought i'd yeah throw that in people were asking where to find like an actual list of all the companies thus thus far that we had that are going to be using xrp slash x rapid and there you go Next up, this was actually pretty interesting. A uh, blockchain platform known as Qtum, some people call it Quantum. I call it Qtum. I heard that once in a, in a podcast. Um, is introducing Bitcoin atomic swaps to its mainnet infrastructure, according to a press release shared with Cointelegraph yesterday. Atomic swaps are a technology that enables the exchange of one cryptocurrency for another without the need for a trusted third party or centralized exchange infrastructure. The implementation of a QTM to BTC atomic swap has been achieved with the use of hash time locked contracts or HTLCs technology and is based on the code of the open source cryptocurrency Decred. HTLC, according to QTM's announcements, are the most secure way of implementing these swaps. The team has also announced plans to release zero value UTXOs, which will allow users that don't hold QTM tokens to interact with smart contracts while the third party pays the fee. As Cointelegraph reported in February, Qtum is a cryptocurrency platform that supports smart contracts and decentralized applications, or dApps. And they talk about the price. What's important here is that uh, there's a, a big push that's happened in the last couple of months, and I'm glad that cryptocurrency develop has, developers have really uh, stuck to it and figured out that this was something that was heavily needed. In the cryptocurrency space, you may have noticed, uh, for those who were here in 2017, you definitely notice a major difference right now. We have a lot of things called um, uh, KYC, Know Your Customer, and AML, Anti-Money Laundering Laws, uh, that are affecting people. The, the entire point of cryptocurrencies is to be able to use your, your money, your currency, whatever you want, however you want, however much you want. If you have $50 million worth of Bitcoin and you decide to spend that $50 million, um, the idea is, is that no one should be able to know what you're doing or when you're transacting or swapping back and forth between anything. Let's say you have let's say you have 100K worth of Ether and you decide to swap it into Neo or something like that. Uh, if you do it on an exchange, as we have it right now, um, you are typically liably financially to have to pay in accordance with the amount that you swapped back and forth and you have to tell people and what have you, so and so and so. So one of the biggest things in the cryptocurrency space that a lot of people, I think it's kind of not, it's, it's not underground. It's just not spoken about as much as people are slowly, rapidly developing these things. And they're called atomic swaps. And the, ma the main idea is that let's say you're walking down the street and you walk into a shop and you try to buy something. Let's say you buy, try to buy a new TV and it costs 600 and you're like, can I play, can I pay and cue them? And they're like, no, you can't pay and cue them. As opposed to you having to, in the future, uh, use Binance or use Coinbase to have to swap that into Bitcoin in order to be able to buy your television. You'll simply be able to do it directly from your phone with an atomic swap. And it'll pretty much give you not a one for one, like you won't get, uh, you know, if you have 50 Qtum, you won't get 50 Bitcoin, but like it gives you the equivalent at that exact time. And this is why you'll be able to then be pay, able to pay for that. And that kind of, you kind of get what I'm saying. The point is, is that um, atomic swaps are going to be incredibly important. They're going to be something that's going to uh, match perfectly with a decentralized exchanges, something that we're also going to see a lot of. I think this year there's going to be a heavy push. Even Binance has announced that they're trying to release their own decentralized exchange sometime this year. I think with the uh, Binance coin being the actual like the the main trading pair, like normally you have like Bitcoin. This one's going to be Binance coin, which is going to be completely insane. Uh, so yeah, when we will eventually enter into a future, I know it seems a bit crazy right now, where using crypto will be incredibly simple. It'll be as simple as downloading an app on your phone, and you'll be able to switch as between, in theory, 
any cryptocurrency that you want at any time without the need of another platform. And also, if we enter this uh, cool, wonderful, awesome future where we're able to do all these things, crypto will also, in essence, have taken over the world. And you'll be able to pay for, buy, and do anything that you want exclusively in crypto, so you'll never even have to cash out of crypto. No, it seems a bit insane, but we're slowly getting there. As of now, um, I think Bitcoin has a couple of uh, coins that can atomic swap with it. I think it's Qtum. I think it's Litecoin. And maybe, maybe Ether. Maybe there was like an Ether test done. Usually when we get news about this, about the actual like atomic swaps, it's like uh, that one occurred and it was successful. They're obviously working on the technology still because they're trying to figure out a way for people to be able to do it in mass. But typically when we get news like this, it's that um, one implementation of a uh, atomic swap actually did end up happening. So by the end of this year, uh, it should hopefully be a bit easier for some of the other coins. But in the future... Uh, the idea is, is that you'll be able to swap between thousands of coins in a moment. That'll be completely insane. To kind of finish things up, going to breeze through this one. Uh, Bitcoin has, for the first time, uh, surpassed the number of Ethereum nodes since 2016. Uh, if you read through the entire article, which I am not going to do, uh, what actually ended up happening was that a lot of, um, I think, Ether's nodes actually went offline. Um, same thing with Bitcoin as the things were happening last year. I don't have, I, I won't read through the exact numbers, but yeah, it says currently Bitcoin has 10,266 nodes. Ethereum has 10,078 as per a report by trust nodes. Um, I expect this to kind of swap once again. It's not that easy to actually run a full Bitcoin node, which is what a lot of people are not urged to do, but uh, they are told it would benefit the cryptocurrency community if you did, because it allows the ledger to be even more distributed the more people who are running the node. Part of the issue right now is that that we have in, especially for Bitcoin, is that if you try to run a full Bitcoin node, meaning you you have to uh, sync up and load on this node every single transaction that has ever happened on the Bitcoin network, um, I think it's like anywhere from like two to four terabytes worth of information. Uh, most computers don't even have uh, over a terabyte worth of space. So imagine having to house two to four terabytes of information that is only going to increase every single day. So it's not that easy. And this is why when we were talking about um, the other day, we were talking about Mimble Wimble. The entire point of it is, is that uh, because, you know, the, 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 the entire point is if you have person one sending to person two, person two sending to person three, person three to person four, person four to person five, the information that's recorded on the actual blockchain is that a transaction happened between number one and number five, because this is all that you really need to know that these coins existed from number one and that this person over here has them. So this entire two, three, two, three, and four information never happened. And therefore the Mimble Wimble blockchain is expected to be around one tenth the size of Bitcoin's actual blockchain. Uh, so it's not that easy to run a Bitcoin node. It's a bit easier to run an Ethereum node, especially with many other nodes. Um, you can run a node for pretty much any other cryptocurrency. I don't think many of them will pay you. It's more like uh, if you are... Some of them will pay you, obviously, but a lot of them are like if you're just trying to support the network and make sure that the network is stable. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting that uh, I'm pretty sure it had to do with Ethereum's, I want to say like price decrease. And this is kind of why Bitcoin has more nodes. I, I'm, I'm expecting this to completely uh, switch places once again because Ethereum is going to be used as like the the institutional platform. We, we spoke about this before. There are a lot of other platforms that are trying to be used as like the smart contract platform and I can do this platform and I'm for video games. A lot of countries have openly announced that they're going to be using Ethereum for their laws and stuff like that. So you can, it's going to be crazy one day when we have governments around the world they, and they probably already are. That's the even crazier part. Um, especially cause we had news about this like a year and a half ago, uh, from all these, uh, from all these countries, they're probably going to, um, start running nodes like openly saying, you know, we have about, you know, 50 Ethereum nodes throughout our offices and stuff like that to be able to, How's the extra data? Kind of insane, but this is the world that we are living in right now. So for those who are unaware, sorry to break the news to you this way. The market is down this morning. Uh, not exactly sure why. I will obviously look for information to try and figure out exactly what's going on. Apparently, we were at the point of the market where, um, what's it called? Uh, we were trending sideways and we were either going to break heavily up or break heavily down. Apparently, we broke down. Um, Bitcoin is around down around five percent ethereum and bitcoin cash took a harder hit uh the actual chart is right here you can kind of see exactly 
when it happened, um, it was sometime this morning, at least morning from my time. I woke up, it was around here, give or take, and then kind of slammed all the way down. It kind of is what it is. Uh, I am of the, I, I wholeheartedly believe, and I mean that completely in every single possible way that the, that the market is so uh, manipulated. I think the the people who are um, who have the most to gain financially are uh, they know exactly what they have to do. If it's easy to manipulate stock markets when you have billions of people in these markets, it's incredibly easy to manipulate the prices of cryptocurrencies. Uh, there's no way, especially if you saw my last video and the video before that and the video before that, all the good news that we've been getting in the cryptocurrency space, there's no reason why any coin shouldn't, no coin should be this low right now and all the prices should at least be double. At least, at least, at least. I'm not even asking for a $10,000 Bitcoin. I'm saying Bitcoin's price should at least be $8,000 right now. But like I said before, and I'll say it again, this is the market that we're in. Uh, very interesting times for the cryptocurrency space. Adoption only continues to increase at a rapid pace. And yet, for some reason, uh, prices still go down. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Tron is also still up at the moment based on the, it seems like the BTT news and the EtherGoo news. No, yeah, yeah. EtherGoo. And I think there was also something else that ended up happening for Tron. But yeah, I think that is definitely going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I do appreciate all of your support. And yeah, I think that'll do it. I'll talk to you all soon. See you.